a lot of people in here. Our students have worked really hard to prepare these presentations. You got to see the ones in your class. Now you're here to see the representatives from each class. I ask that you please be quiet during your presentation, be respectful, and hold any applause that you have until the end of that speaker's presentation. Our first speaker for today, representing Mr. Pritchard's class, Matea Quick. The triumph cannot be had without a struggle is an inspiring statement made by Wilma Rudolph when she finally overcame her disability. As a child, Wilma had a very scary disability. Not only from a speech, well, you learn how astonishing Wilma was, but you will also learn not to judge people's disabilities. They are people too and should not be judged. To launch, Wilma was born on June 23, 1940. When she was only four years old, she had a deformed left leg and was diagnosed with polio. The doctor said she would never walk again. But Wilma's mom was always encouraging her, saying she would one day walk again. Moving along, her mom had to drive for 50 miles just to get to a hospital that would serve black people for therapy and such. After two years, Wilma could finally walk with a brace on. After five years, Wilma could finally walk because of one faithful day at church when Wilma took off her brace and started walking down the aisle. She, but she still had to wear orthopedic shoes for two years. Then she could walk like any other child. Going on, since Wilma could walk, she competed in the 1956 Summer Olympic Games. She had won a bronze medal, so she returned to her home in Tennessee. She then showed her classmates in high school her bronze medal. They were amazed. In 1960, Wilma decided she would go back and try to win a gold medal. Guess what? She won three. Wilma became the first ever American woman to receive three gold medals, plus one bronze medal, in the last race, Wilma twisted her ankle, but that didn't stop her. She won first place. To wrap up, Wilma was a very astounding person. She is also very inspiring to me, and I hope she is to you too after this speech. Wilma has gone through many tragic moments throughout her life, but she overcame those tragic moments with triumph. As Wilma herself once said, never underestimate the power of dreams and the, and the influence of human spirit. Famous that a movie came out 
about it in the 1920s. The Senate was looked as a royal and classy ship to ride. It cost lots of money. The cost of the seats started at $500, and the lowest was three. The attendance is a very important part of history. It's very sad many people died that day. When the ship sank, Margaret overcame the tragedy of near dying and took the courage to help those who lost their loved ones. She's an example of her, a hero in her time. And that's it. It was September 2nd, 1666, 12.30 a.m. Everyone was tucked in bed and the streets of London were dark. Then, out of nowhere, a fire broke out in a bakery on Pudding Lane. This was the start of a devastation known as the Great Fire of London. This fire lasted for days, burning down homes in seconds, reaching degrees you can't imagine. What could cause a fire of this magnitude? According to my research, there are three possible theories. First, the historian pointed the big round pudding link to start the fire. He thought he did not put out the fire in his oven properly and left it running all night. Second, historians found broken and burned pieces of tar barrels down inside by the bakery. This is a very flammable liquid, which may have helped the fire spread. The third and final theory is that the tenure drought in London had finally taken a toll on the city. Ultimately, this tragedy burned down two-thirds of the city of London, and it burned for four days straight. It burned down 13,000 homes, 92 churches, St. Paul's Cathedral, and most of the London Bridge. The most devastating thing of all is that 70,000 people were made homeless, and it was reported that six people lost their lives over those four days. Following all this devastation and destruction, one man, Christopher Wren, volunteered to reconstruct the city of London to help his fellow citizens. He knew it was a big task, he was up for the challenge. He spent his first seven years reconstructing St. Paul's Cathedral along with the 92 other churches. They were built, they were built using bricks and cement topped with a beautiful gold leaf that shined like the sun. Once the churches were complete, Christopher and his crew of five men started to rebuild the townhomes and buildings using bricks, wood, and cement for a sturdier structure. And after 50 years of hard work and labor, the city was free from ashes, burnt wood, and all reminders of the devastation, and was now filled with blooming flowers, clear skies, and a dream of what to come. <coughs> in conclusion, even in great suffrage at the Great Fire of, great fire of London, this, you can always hope that someone rise in the midst of disaster. The fire filled the city with desperate needs of love and hope, but when the fire was done burning, one man stood up from the ashes and volunteered to reconstruct the city of London. Christopher Wren was that man. He did this so his fellow citizens could live in new sturdier homes, worship in new churches, and have hope for a better future. As Amy Lee McCree once stated, kindness can transform someone's dark moments with a blaze of light. Do you know Rosa Parks was arrested for not giving up her seat? Rosa Parks had to fight for her rights and African Americans' rights to sit in a seat they wanted to sit in. I will tell you the tragedy and triumph Rosa Parks had to overcome to let African Americans and herself be able to ride the same bus as white people and be able to not have to give up their seat. Rosa Parks was born in Alabama with her brother. Rosa Parks' mom wanted Rosa, pa Rosa to have high school education, but it was not easy for an African-American girl living in the 1920s. Her mom and dad did not give up on her because her mom was a teacher. <laughs> on December 1st, 1995, Rosa Parks was coming home from work by bus. Buses separated black white citizens and African-American citizens in 1955. The bus driver told three African-Americans and Rosa Parks to move for a white, white rider. Rosa Parks refused to move. She was arrested for not giving up her seat. 
Rosa Parks' arrest was the beginning of the end of segregation. Rosa Parks became known as the mother of the civil rights movement. In 1995, Rosa Parks was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, which is the highest honor the United States bestows on a citizen. In conclusion, Rosa Parks lived during difficult times for African Americans. And a woman that wanted high school education and her diploma, which she got when she was 20 in 1995. African Americans were not allowed to sit with white African Americans on the bus. And when she refused to give up her seat, for a white writer, she was arrested due to her determination and strength. She became known as the mother of the civil rights movement. Rosa Parks taught me to never give up and that it doesn't matter what color your skin is. You should not be treated a different be treated differently. Did you know that most friends survived it? Titanic in 1912. Today I will tell you about the unsinkable Molly Brown. She had two children and helped out in the Red Cross. Molly's real family was Danielle Collins Taubin and Mitchell Taubin. Molly got half siblings and their names were Catherine Bridget Taubin Becker and Mary Ann Remner. She had worked in a department store in Lisa. Did you know that Molly was born on July 18, 1867 in Hanville, Missouri? Molly grew up in a cottage a block away from the Mississippi River. At the age of 13, Molly worked in a factory. In 1886, Molly got married to James Joseph Brown. He was also called J.J. Brown. Molly was 19 years old when she married James, and he was 31. Molly Brown's dream was to be an actress. Molly had two children and helped out on the Red Cross. Their, and all these children's names were Catherine Ellen Brown and Lawrence Brown. She separated from James in 1909. Did you know that Molly survived the Titanic in 1912? Molly was seated in first class on the Titanic. The reason Molly went on the Titanic was because one of her family members was sick. The Titanic hit an iceberg, and that is how it sank. Molly is so nice that she wanted other people to go on the Titanic before her. Molly had to stand up to men because they told women that they can't row the boat, so she told the woman on the boat to row it. Did you know that Molly had an amazing life after the Titanic? Molly pioneered the new juvenile justice system. Molly ran for Senate before women were even allowed to vote. After the Titanic scene, Molly became a socialist, killed traumas, and activist. In the 1920s and 30s, she worked at Red Cross. Molly made impacts wherever she went. Molly made a quote and it said, money can't make a man or woman. It isn't who you are, nor what you have, but what you are that counts. Did you know all that about Molly Brown? Molly lived near the Mississippi River. She had loved her family. Molly was a survivor of the Titanic. Molly overcame her tragedy by thinking everything from the first. Have you ever eaten a Hershey bar and wondered, who made this? We got someone here to talk to all of you about it. Milton Hershey was born on September 13, 1857, at Dairy Township, Pennsylvania. Milton's parents were Henry and Fanny Hershey. Milton did have a sister named Serena, but sadly died from scarlet fever. His mother, Franny, was a devoted Mennonite. His father, Henry, was a dreamer and working on his next get rich quick scheme. Because Milton moved so much, he did not get a good education. By the time he turned 13, he had attended six different schools. After the fourth grade, his mother decided he should leave school and learn a trade. Milton's mom found him a job as an apprentice for a printer. He thought the work was boring and did not enjoy the job. 
Milton's mom helped him find another job with the candy maker. In 1972, Milton H. went to work for Joseph Royer at the Lancaster Confectionery Shop. He made all sorts of candy, including caramels, fudge, and peppermints. He really enjoyed being a candy maker. When Milton was 19, he decided to open a business of his own. He borrowed money from his aunt and uncle to get the business started. He opened it in the big city of Philadelphia. He sold candy and nuts and ice cream. Unfortunately, no matter how hard he worked, he couldn't get his business to make a profit. He worked harder and harder, but soon he had to shut his business down. Milton was not one to give up. He moved to Denver, Colorado, and got a job with another candy maker, where he learned that fresh milk made best tasting candy. He opened another shop in New York, too, this shop failed also. Back in Lancaster, Milton again started a new candy business. This time, he would have specialized in just making caramels. His caramel company was a huge success. Before long, Milton had to open new branches and factories all over the world. Even though Milton was a huge success, he had a new idea that was even bigger, chocolate. He sold his caramel company for a million dollars and put all his hopes into making chocolate. He wanted a huge factory where he could mass produce chocolates. Sadly, Milton died on October 13, 1945. Now you all know who made the Hershey. Beautiful trees, beautiful birds, beautiful DDT? <laughs> Ew, DDT is bad for the nature. Wanna know who stopped it? You guessed it, Rachel Carson. Today I'm gonna to be talking about Rachel Carson, the person who stopped DDT. You should probably listen or else you might break the law for using DDT. All right, let's begin. Rachel Carson was born on May 27, 1907. She was born in Springdale, Pennsylvania. Her parents were Robert, Robert W. Carson and Maria Carson. Her siblings were Maria and Williams and Robert M. Carson. When she was young, she put a conch shell over a year and listened to the ocean, even though she knew it was her own pulse. When she was 11, she won money as a prize for being in the St. Nicholas Magazine. Life was good until they released a chemical called DDT. DDT was meant to kill mosquitoes to prevent people from getting Zika. There was an airplane that, spoke, that sprayed DDT everywhere. Well, you may ask, how is this bad? DDT gets on the leaves, and worms eat the leaves. And then the robins eat the worms. Like a domino effect, right? When Rachel noticed this, she had to do something. And she did do something. She wrote a book called Silent Spring. In Silent Spring, it's all about DDT and why it was bad. It was called Silent Spring because years before DDT was made, robins were chirping and it would make a day that start alive. Then suddenly in the spring, there were no robins that were chirping. Silent Spring affected us in a good way because it sold to tell the truth. Without the book, robins would probably have been extinct. Rachel Carson died on April 14, 1964. In conclusion, Rachel Carson was born on May 17, 1907, in Springdale, Pennsylvania. DDT came and she made one book to stop it all. Let's take a moment to enjoy all the robins she saved. fighting for farm workers. There was no such thing as defeat and nonviolence from Cesar Chavez. Cesar Chavez fought farm workers. So today I will be talking about Cesar Chavez and how he's known for his efforts to create better working conditions for farm workers. Cesar was born March 31, 1927. For many years, the Chavez family worked in California. The family was always on the move, so Cesar attended more than 30 different schools. After eighth grade, he left school to work full-time in the fields. At age 17, he left 
he left serving the U.S. Navy, but when he returned, nothing changed to labor camps. Some workers were abused or worked in bad conditions. For example, it didn't matter how poor they were or hungry, if, if they were abused or cheated. He joined the CSO to help Latinos vote. In, in 1959, he became the exclusive director of the CSO and became the most powerful Mexican-American organization. In 1962, he, he, he was formed a new rule called the National Farm Workers Association. The union would join the Philippine Hinder Strike. The two groups combined had 5,000 people. Angry farmers would fight back, but strikers grew angrier. But Caesar insisted on a peaceful strike. In March 1966, he and hundreds of farm workers began a march to Delahano to Sacramento. On, on September 1966 to 1970, he did a boycott on California because of poor pay and working conditions. By 1970, the results of the were clear. The, the, the farm workers received higher pay, regular breaks, and vacation days. But sadly, the journey ends here. He, he died in April 1933. He was remembered for his dedication and sacrifice for the good of all farm workers. normal hotel or you want to go to a best beach hotel in 2013. Normal. That's right, the Treatments Island Resort was named best beach hotel in 2013. Today I will tell you all about this amazing hotel, like when it started and what you can do here. But before you slap on some sunscreen, I'm going to tell you a, bad, a sad story that happened at the Treatments Island Resort. A man got his life taken after an elevator came crashing down and killed him. The Trader's Island Resort has overcame these things by adding new and more interest, interesting stuff. The Trader's Island Resort is home to many fish. There are over 200 fish in 31 species, including of the green moray eel, grouper, snook, tarpon, and many more. Fun fact, the green moray eel, or any eel, are blind. Another fun fact, one of the fish tanks they own, you can actually go swimming in it. And it's also been on TV show, Tent. The, imagine Disney running just with fish. That's what the Treatment Island Resort is like. There are many things you can do here, like eat s'mores, eat at restaurants, swim in the Gulf, and best of all, stay in the hotels. The hotel rooms have coffee maker, flat screen TV, flip up bed, and many more. The rooms are just so majestic. Now that you know some things that you can do here, go on over today. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you where the Tradewinds Island Resort is located. The Tradewinds Island Resort is located 5500 Boat Boulevard, St. Pete Beach, 33706. Thank you. 
needed. Meanwhile, in New York, cleanup efforts were underway. Hundreds of firefighters, police, and construction workers searched for survivors while cleaning tons of debris. Not only were they dealing with debris from the top of buildings, they were also dealing with dangerous dust and ash. The cleanup took nine months and approximately $40 billion, which made 9-11 the largest insured event to ever happen. The triumph America experienced from this tragedy was all of us coming together as one. And there were flags on every house. And although the economy was not the best after 9-11, right now it's growing at a very fast rate and we have the lowest unemployment in 50 years. There is also a new power bill and it's called the Freedom Tower and also a memorial for those that lost their lives. This was an event every American will always remember. Okay, that was our last speaker. So if you will give us just a moment so they can finish tallying the results and we will have your winner announced.